DX12, the promised land of all graphics processing. <laughs> Welcome to Electric, where I bring you electronics for the electronics freaks. DirectX 12 is the newest installment of Microsoft's DirectX application programming interface. Visual processing and other multimedia tasks on Windows use the DirectX software. DirectX is being pushed out to virtually every Microsoft platform like some sort of STD in a city of nymphomaniacs. This is due to the Windows Everywhere campaign by Microsoft. That is to push out Windows 10 core bits out over all platforms that it can handle. Windows 10 PCs, Windows phones, and even the Xbox One. This makes me feel like I'm being forced to catch some sort of virus that Microsoft is spreading around. If you don't have it now, you will soon. That's Microsoft's new ad campaign. If someone from Microsoft is watching this, just make sure my name is in the credits somewhere. Oh, if you didn't know, the name Xbox derives from Direct Xbox. They dropped the Direct in Direct Xbox in a smart move to make the name sound cooler. Now why Direct X? What's so great about it? Well, to know that, I must tell you a story. Way back in the long, long ago, there were multiple APIs caught in an epic struggle to see who would win the right to become the main digital platform for games. Now, due to sheer volume of components involved, not to mention combinations of said components, there was a day of realization for many developers. Why not use a higher level standard API to handle all the hardware compatibility in the background? This is where DirectX comes in and takes out all other APIs. Many years later, AMD decided to try to take its crown with Mantle, but the evil overlord was defeated by the programming gods of Microsoft. This is where DirectX Revision 12 comes in. Now, DirectX 12 breaks the high-level only trend by giving developers an optional low-level or closer to hardware options for further game optimization. The best part of this is that it helps games handle CPU utilization more efficiently, like better load balancing over all cores instead of just dropping all of the game's loads directly on one or two CPU cores. Games will also have less GPU overhead, and less overhead means more speed. We need more power! DirectX 12, now with explicit multi-adapter. There's another slogan for you, Microsoft. What is explicit multi-adapter, you ask? Well, it's just a feature that lets you utilize every bit of all GPUs inside your computer. That means your integrated Intel graphics and if you like to rock both green team and red team because you think they should be friends and stop fighting, your dream has come true, in theory. And that's all good until you see the grunt work that the game programmers have to put in to make it all work. The funny part about all of this is that AMD already did it, and that was with Mantle. And AMD, being the evil overlords that they are, boasted that Microsoft would never release DirectX 12. Then BAM! DirectX 12 was released and way better than Mantle. It did everything that Mantle promised and did it on a much larger range of hardware. Now the big questions on everyone's mind is, will DirectX 12 make that big of a performance difference in games? Is this a whole new generation of hardcore graphics that I'm going to experience because of how awesomely awesome DirectX 12 handles processing delegation? Am I going to be unable to recognize the difference between reality and video games because the graphics are so lifelike? Am I pregnant? All signs point to yes. Except the pregnant part, of course. DirectX 12 can result in a 50% power boost, or even more according to Intel's research. And in the exaggerated great words of Brian Langley, this is like getting free hardware, baby! And through all of this, there's one question in the back of your mind, one burning question that I forgot to mention, the heartbreaker and the wallet breaker. 
Well, I need a new graphics card to play DX12 games. Well, DX12 will work on most modern graphics cards. From AMD, the Radeon 7000 series and up, and Nvidia goes back even further to their 400 series and up. But if you've been reading the underground media forums saying the full DirectX 12 is only supported by the latest releases from Nvidia and AMD, you might think you need to upgrade to get this full support. Even upgrade to only high-end graphics cards to get it. Well, that's not entirely true. It's complicated, but basically there are two levels of DirectX 12 support. DirectX 12 feature level 0 and DirectX 12 feature level 1. What this means is that if a graphics card doesn't have some features on it, it cannot support that feature level. Now, do you miss out on all of DX12 if your card only supports DX12 feature level 0? Not necessarily. You have to take into account the biggest feature of DX12. That's the multi-threading and multi-GPU capabilities that are available on every level of DX12. This is where you'll see most of the performance bumps. Now, what if you run Linux? First of all, high five. Second, you'll have Vulkan and Vulcan is to Mantle as Darth Vader is to Anakin Skywalker, the evil open-sourced overlord risen from the ashes of AMD's Mantle project, coming to a Linux box near you whenever the Kronos team feels like releasing it. And that will most likely be when Valve's Linux-powered Steam machines finally release. Considering that Linux gaming is on the rise, Vulcan and OpenGL are going to be a bigger hit this year than ever. I hope you enjoy this video on DX12. Now, don't forget to comment down below on your thoughts on DX12. Also, hit that like button if you want to see more of these informative videos. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.